Okay, iPadOS 16 is still in beta right now, but when it does come out, it's going to make some iPads really useful. As for other iPads, mainly the ones that are 2018 and newer, but don't have the M1 chip, you get some other features that are pretty cool, but then there's a third class of iPad, and that's the ones that came out before 2018. Now I know that the hardware limitations of older devices like the first generation iPad Pro will start to catch up with it, and that means that you can't add as many features. But there must be something interesting in there for those older older iPad users. Well, in my search, I found a couple things that I find interesting, but if you don't really care for any of these features, I'll leave timestamps to all of them so that you can jump around and see what might be coming to your iPad. The first improvement is one that I thought should have been included for a while, and that's the ability to add shapes and to be able to add text in the drawing space. So if you're not familiar with the Notes app on iPad, the drawing area and the text area would traditionally be separate. And to include text and drawing in the same area, you would need to use something like the Files app in order to make this happen. If you're trying to take notes, it's not very efficient to jump back and forth. Therefore, being able to include text, change the size, font, color, bold, underline, all those sorts of features, and have that along with your notes in the Notes app is going to be really useful for note taking. The next thing is pasteboard permissions. So if you've ever gone into an app and it gives you the notification that the app just pasted without your permission, well now that's going to change up a little bit. With your first time using the app after an update, it's going to ask you if that app can have permission to use your pasteboard. If it's an app you don't really trust or use that often, you can deny it and they won't be able to take what's on your clipboard. Then there's the infamous weather app. This is something that Apple's been holding out on for a really long time, and it's finally here. I don't know if it's worth really all of the time that it took, although this doesn't bring too many more features versus the iPhone weather app, so I'm assuming that the calculator app should be done pretty soon. For the messages, now you can unsend, edit, or recover deleted text messages after 30 days. Also, if you accidentally read a message that you didn't mean to, you can mark it as unread. The next feature is for FaceTime, and it's one that I've needed to use in the past. If if you're FaceTiming on your phone and it's about to die, you can actually switch to another device without having to hang up and tell somebody that you're going to call them right back, and it's pretty easy to do. Another thing which I'm excited for but doesn't seem to be included yet is Freeform. In the presentation, this was introduced as a large whiteboard which you could collaborate with other people on during something like FaceTime and have a live collaboration. They showed that you could put PDFs, other documents, draw, type, basically do anything. Another thing that's a good addition and I think will add usability to people who are pairing AirPods for the first time is the fact that they'll have their own settings within the settings app. Passkey support is coming with iPadOS 16, but you can't really make use of this until the third party website or whichever website you're using has support for it. So as time goes on, we'll see greater support for this. If you find that you miss a lot of calls or have a lot of unread text messages, you might be able to use the contacts widget as it'll have most of your recent contacts and whether or not you have a missed call or unread messages from them. In the essence of collaboration, there's also shared tab groups. If you're working on a project together with somebody or you need to share some of the research that you found, you can share hold tab groups with somebody via text. And when they look at it, they'll be able to see all of the tabs that you're looking at. The next thing is the mail app. Honestly, I don't use the mail app as I use the perspective mail apps for the different accounts that I have, but apparently it's gotten better. I can't really give a good take on this because I didn't use it before, so I'm not really sure how serious the improvements are. The Files app gets a little bit of an improvement now, as you can see how much storage a folder is taking up. Additionally, there's other smaller tweaks to the Files app that make it feel like it's getting closer to a proper file manager. However, I still feel like it has a little bit of ways to go. Overall, these are the most important features that I think will be coming to older iPads. There's a lot of cool stuff that older iPads won't get, but at least there's something. Leave me a comment to let me know what you thought about the video and as always if you're interested in more tech videos make sure to check out the rest of my channel.